What's up YouTube, Shadow here and welcome back to another weapon showcase for Bloodborne. This time we're showcasing the Beast Claw. Now this weapon is, I have it at level 9, it has 138 physical base damage and an extra 212 damage from the blood, blood gemstones and scaling. It has a C scaling in strength and a D in skill and it requires 14 strength and 12 skill to wield. It also has a D scaling in arcane, so that's good as well. Now we're going to talk about my stats. I am a level 125. I have 35 vitality and endurance. I have 30 strength and skill, 23 blood tinge, and 22 arcane. And my attack rating for this weapon is 350. So with that said, um, this weapon is actually found in a chalice dungeon. If you want to know exactly where to find it and what chalice dungeon you can find it in, uh, you look it up on the Blubble and Wiki. Also, I use bolt paper just for the extra damage output. So we're about to get into the PvP fights now, so I can showcase the gameplay uh, for this weapon. So I'll see you guys there. All right, guys. So welcome to the PvP matches now. One thing I want to say about this weapon is, you see it when I transformed it, it actually turns your hands into claws. Especially your left one is a beast claw. And this weapon does have a special effect. And you see when I have it transformed to the two claws, when you hit your opponent, you actually start to fill a beast meter. Now when the beast meter fills and you get closer to beast mode, all it does is... It the higher the meter is, the more attack rating you have, the stronger your attacks are. So that is very useful, but there are some pretty big cons that go against that with this weapon, and I'm going to talk to you about that. So, first thing I really want to talk about is the range. It is a claw weapon. It does not have really any range to it. If you're going to use this weapon, you need to be up in your opponent's face, and you need to be very aggressive. Um, so it has been known to be used as a hit and run weapon and unlock weapon like you just unlock you run around hit you run So it is a very difficult weapon to learn to use especially with my play style. So with that said um, The cons are really that because it's a hit and run type weapon because you use it unlocked and because it doesn't have any range to it you're, it's going to be very hard to uh, successfully land hits on your opponent fast enough for the beast meter to even matter. So yeah, you got to keep that in mind. The beast meter is very good, it's very useful, but just because of how hard it is to hit your opponents, it's really not going to matter because you won't be able to fill it up. And if you do fill it up a little bit, it's not going to stay there. It drains pretty fast. So yeah. Uh, you see, I'm trying to throw in some jumping attacks. I'm trying to mix it up. That's something you definitely have to do. Um, if not, you can pretty much easily get parried. Uh, with that said, the pros of this weapon is it does have a really nice attack rating for it being a plus 9. If you upgrade it, you're going to want to upgrade to plus 10 for its full attack potential if you want to use this weapon. And of course, put your best blood gemstones on it. 40 higher attack damage, but for what it has for me, being a plus 9 and with the blood drain stones I have, it's actually pretty fantastic. It can dish out the damage, but again, it's just really hard to hit your opponents with this weapon. So you see there, if you do successfully get them caught in your hits, it's going to hurt them bad. And they're going to be freaking out, their health's going to drain super fast, which is always nice. So, with that said, we're coming into the next fight, so I'm going to talk more about the fights now. Alright, so you see we have Rosa Smiles here. Just letting her kill the uh, environmental enemy. Now, uh, a lot of the fights I've been playing in Bloodborne, I wanted to talk to you guys about this. Um, I've been playing it, it's become a, a lot recently, trying to get some videos going. It's becoming very clear that there is really no dual honor, uh, which a lot of Dark Souls veterans are know what that is. Is uh, where you you come to a certain spot for a duel, which would be this area in Bloodborne so far that we know. Now you give your bow and you fight, and the best man wins. No heals, no bullshit. It's this best man wins. In this game, you get bows, yes, you get people who will bow to you and show respect, 
But when they fight you, it's a totally different story because they bone marrow ash, lead elixir, and then start R1 spamming, L1 spamming, and triangle spamming. They will heal when they want. So I'm starting to see the PvP in this game becoming something very different than Dark Souls. I don't think there's really going to be dual honor. And if there is, it's not going to be the same thing as it was in Dark Souls. It's actually going to be something much much different and some I just have to get used to because a lot of these fights I've had trying to get the footage for a showcase I felt very disgusted with the people I was fighting and sometimes I'd feel disgusted with myself because I would have to resort to spamming myself or to win and I I'm so the way I've been playing this game the way it seems it needs to be played is you give your dual honor you give your bow but as soon as you start seeing a bone marrow ash go off or healing spams go off or R1 spams, you start doing it yourself and you do not let that person win because they have no right to win. Period. You do everything you can even if you have to become something you hate. So that's just something that you're going to be seeing now in my videos. I can't help it. I do, I do have honor when I fight in PvP. I wish it would be like that period. But it's just not like that, and I understand this isn't Dark Souls, it's Bloodborne, it's totally different, so I'm just trying to get, I'm trying to learn how the PvP is working in this and try and get used to it. But yeah, so what I'm going to do for now on in my videos is get the battle, fight normally, but as soon as I see them starting to heal or wanting to do, like, any cheesy stuff, then I'm going to resort to it as well. So please don't be throwing down comments down below saying that I uh, stop spamming, blah, blah, blah. I don't do it to people unless they do it to me or if I fought them before. Like, you see that? That's crazy. There's a lot of that in this game. So, you know what? Right here, I'll admit I spammed the shit out of this guy because he was spamming me right there. I was done. So, anyway, that's Bloodborne for you. So, yeah, totally different. Well, I'm just going to have to learn. Burn that. Going back to the showcase. Overall, to sum this weapon up. It does have a lot of cons, but if you learn how to use it right, which is going to take time, it can become very devastating. So yes, this is a very good weapon. It's just going to take a lot more time and practice than normal weapons. You're going to have to use it a lot more to get the hang of it. But once you do, once you do master this weapon, it's going to fucking destroy people if you use it right. So with that said, this is the last fight. So I hope you guys understand how these videos are going to be, like how different they're going to be from my Dark Souls videos, because that's just how it is, it's the game, it's not me, it's not the other players, that's just how the game is, it seems like. So, this is the last fight, ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys so much for watching my showcase for the Beast Claw, hopefully you learned a thing or two, and again, if you're interested in locating this weapon for yourself, look up on the wiki, it's in a child's dungeon, you can get the exact glyph code to put in to get it in layer 2. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Again, remember to like, comment, and subscribe for your daily Bloodborne and Dark Souls video. There's going to be a shit ton more Bloodborne coming up here in the next couple days. So, be sure to check that out. And I will see you guys in the next video.